Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Process control, split range control system and cascade control system. In this video course, you will learn the working principle and applications of split range control and cascade control. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce more knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. In the control systems used in several process industries, split range and cascade control schemes are frequently used to control system. We will discuss these control systems one by one. First, split range control system. In many process applications, sometimes it is necessary to have multiple control valves driven by commands from a single common controller. Typically, the system consists of two control valves handling two different fluids. They respond to output from a common controller. Control valves configured in this way to respond to output from a common controller is called split range control valves. Split range valves can be configured to work in sequence in different ways. But the most widely used in the refineries and petrochemical plants is progressive type split range control. One of the widely used application in petrochemical plant is to control pressure in certain distillation columns. The working principle of a split range control scheme in a distillation column is illustrated in this figure. In many instances, the feed to distillation column consists of light gases which are essentially non condensables at the operating pressure and temperature of the column. Hence, they accumulate in the reflux drum. Usually, in a distillation column without light gases, cooling water is used to control the pressure. In columns with feed containing inerts and non condensables the cooling water flow is not desired method. Instead, a split range control method is used. Two pressure control valves, one a nitrogen valve PCVA that admit nitrogen into the reflux drum and another pressure control valve PCVB that lets the non condensables to go to the atmosphere or by purging. Why two control valves and why nitrogen is required? The quantity of light gases coming into the column along with the feed may not be constant and can vary depending on the performance of the upstream processing units. Hence, the mass of the light gases to be purged from the reflux drum through a single pressure control valve will also vary. This will make the pressure control difficult and there is a possibility of the pressure going into vacuum due to delayed control valve action which is an inherent nature of the system. Pressure swing to vacuum is not also desirable from safety point of view in case of hazardous fluids as the air will enter the column through the leakages. Hence, 
nitrogen valve PCVA is provided that will admit nitrogen and prevent column going to vacuum and maintain the column pressure at the desired value. This figure illustrates the function of a split range control valve with valve opening versus pressure control output diagram. Initially, the control valve PCVA is fully open and PCVB is fully closed. At this point, the pressure increases above the set point. The control output starts increasing from zero and the control valve PCVA begins to close. At 25% output of the controller, the PCVA is 50% closed and the control valve B, PCVB, is still fully closed. As the control output increases to 50%, the control valve PCVA goes to full close and PCVB still remains fully closed. As the output increases beyond 50%, the PCVB starts opening. At control output of 75%, PCVB is 50% open. As the control output increases to 100%, the PCVB goes to full open and PCVA is still remains closed. The reverse will take place when there is a pressure decrease in the column. The PCVB will close first. When it is closed, if the pressure continues to decrease, the controller output will decrease below 50% and the second valve PCVA will begin to open and allow the nitrogen to come in to maintain the pressure. This table presents the controller output to the two split range control valves and their response and position. Control output 0%, corresponding signal output in PSI 0, A wall position full open, B wall position full close. Control output 25%, signal output 3 PSI, A wall 50% open, B wall full close. Control output 50%, signal output PSI 6 PSI, A wall full close, B wall full close. Note at 50% output, both A and B are fully closed. Control output 75%, signal output 9 PSI, A wall full closed, B wall 50% open. Control output 100%. Signal output 15 PSI, A wall full close, B wall full open. Another application of split range control is in the application of temperature control where the process needs to be heated or cooled depending on the product or process temperature. One temperature controller sends output signals to two control valves, cooling medium valve and heating medium valve. If the product has to be heated, then the controlled output signal will be such that the heating medium valve is open, either 50% or 100%, but the cooling medium will remain fully closed. Having discussed split range control system, we will move on to cascade control system. What is cascade control? How is it different from other closed loop control? Cascade control is an advanced single loop control. Cascade control is widely used in refineries and petrochemical plants across several process operations.
cascade controlled involves use of two controllers with the output of the first controller providing the set point for the second controller. The feedback loop for one controller nesting into the other. The cascade control concept is illustrated in this block diagram. There are two controllers, a primary controller and a secondary controller. The output of the first or the primary controller QP1 is used as a set point SP2 of the secondary controller. The primary controller is called the master and the secondary controller is called the slave. The slave follows the master. To make your understanding of the concept better, let me give an illustration of a real world example in a petrochemical plant. Shown in the sketch is a propane vaporizer which produces vapor from liquid propane using steam for supplying the vapor feed to a series of reactors. Vaporizer level is maintained at around 50% and the steam is allowed to pass through the internal coils. The feed to the vaporizer is monitored with a flow meter and regulated by a flow control valve. The whole scheme works on cascade control concept. The level in the vaporizer is measured by a level measuring instrument and the transmitter signal PV1 is sent to the level controller LIC. The output of the LIC OP1 is a set point to the flow controller FIC, the secondary controller which also gets a signal from the flow transmitter PV2. The secondary color output OP2 is sent to the control wall FCV to regulate the propane flow to the vaporizer. The LIC is a master and FIC is a slave. Why do we use cascade control? What are the advantages and disadvantages? To understand the reason, for a moment think what happens if you have a closed loop control in our previous example instead of cascade control. The control will function and process will continue and the level in the vaporizer will be maintained. If there is a disturbance such as an increase in propane pressure in the feed line to the vaporizer, it will cause the flow to vaporizer to increase and the level will rise fast. The level sensor will take some time to sense and send a signal to close the level control valve. In the case of cascade control, the level is maintained by regulating the liquid feed to the vaporizer through a flow control valve. The flow control loop has a flow sensor which detects a disturbance or flow variation well in advance and sends the output to the controller. This flow inner loop of flow control is closer to the source of disturbance and its response is faster than the outer loop. This combination will help the process to correct the deviation faster. The net effect is improved process performance. The disadvantage is higher cost. The cost of cascade control is nearly double that of a simple closed loop controller due to the requirement for a second sensor to measure the process variable. In our example, the flow sensor. How the cost is higher relative to a simple closed loop control is illustrated in this figure. The vaporizer pressure control is a simple closed loop control. The level control 
is a cascade control. The cascade control has additional sensors and associated instrumentation network. Hence, the total installation cost will be higher. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.